Hi friends, in our last video, we have discussed the different types of price elasticity of demand. Now, in this video, we are going to see the different methods of measuring price elasticity of demand. But before go to discuss the different methods of measuring price elasticity of demand, here some exercise is given for us that we are going to solve. See, in the first column, <coughs> degree of elasticity of demand is shown and in the second column, types of elasticity of demand are shown here and description percentage is shown in the third column. So, see the first exercise is here <coughs> dash perfectly inelastic change in price does not affect at all change in price doesn't affect demand at all so what is the degree of elasticity of demand here the degree of elasticity of demand is zero elasticity of demand is equal to zero Second exercise, elasticity of demand is equal to 1, it means it is a unitary elastic demand, unitary elastic demand, here change in demand is equal to the change in price, a percentage change in quantity demanded is exactly equal to the percentage change in its price there is said to be unitary elastic demand the coefficient is equal to one now next elasticity of demand is greater than one it means it is a relatively elastic demand or it is a more elastic demand and what about description a percentage change in quantity demanded is greater than percentage change in its price it means change in quantity demanded is greater than change in price of a commodity okay in the next exercise degree of elasticity of demand dash relatively inelastic demand means what elasticity of demand is less than 1 where change in demand is less than change in price change in demand is less than change in its price and finally elasticity of demand is equal to infinite it means it is a perfectly elastic demand or it is also called as a infinitely elastic demand where a small change in price or there is a no change in price of a commodity when a very small change in price causes a larger change in quantity demanded of a commodity there is said to be perfectly elastic or infinitely elastic demand okay so now we are going to discuss the different methods of measuring price elasticity of demand. Friends, the price elasticity of demand can be measured with the help of three different methods. Which are these methods? These methods are ratio or percentage method. This is the first method. Ratio or percentage method then second is total expenditure method and third one is point method or geometric method these are the three different methods through which the price elasticity of demand can be measured so here we are going to discuss one by one method of price measuring price elasticity of demand number one ratio method or percentage method this method is developed by dr alfred marshall who developed this professor 
Alfred Marshall developed this method. According to this method, elasticity of demand is measured by dividing percentage change in demand by the percentage change in price. This method is also known as a arithmetic method. This method is also known as arithmetic method. Who developed this method? Dr. Alfred Marshall. How price elasticity of demand is measured? By dividing percentage change in quantity demanded. By dividing price elasticity of demand is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded of a commodity divided by percentage change in price of a commodity so here price elasticity of demand is measured by dividing percentage change in demand by percentage change in its price and here another one formula is given mathematically the above formula can be presented in such a way see here you can see this formula is presented this is the simple way of measuring price elasticity of demand elasticity of demand is equal to delta q divided by q into p divided by delta p where delta q stands for change in quantity demanded q stands for original demand original demand where p stands for original price and delta p stands for change in price here one example is given for measuring price elasticity of demand that we are going to solve here see when price of x commodity was rupees 20 10 kilograms is the demand when price is rupees 25 there is a rise in price from 20 to 25 as a result demand fallen down from 10 units to 9 units now the new demand is of 9 kilograms so here <coughs> see delta q delta q divided by q into p divided by delta p delta q means change in demand change in demand the original demand is of 10 kilograms and new demand is of 9 kilograms so new demand minus original demand new demand minus original demand is 1 here it is a negative one minus one but when we measure the price elasticity of demand we should ignore this negative sign this negative sign comes because of there are inverse relationships between demand and price of a commodity but you should keep it in your mind that we should ignore the negative sign while measuring the price elasticity of demand so it is not a negative it is not a minus one it is a one so change in quantity demanded is one original quantity demanded is 10 what is the original price see original price is 20 
and what is the change in price new price minus old price that is 5 here 20 divided by 5 so here the price elasticity of demand is equal to 0 0.4 is equal to 0 0.4 it means elasticity of demand is less than 1 the degree of responsiveness is less than 1 therefore demand is relatively inelastic demand is what relatively inelastic because of the coefficient is less than 1 so in such a way price elasticity of demand is measured with the help of ratio method or percentage method this is also known as arithmetic method this method is developed by dr alfred marshall so this is a very simplest way of measuring price elasticity of demand i hope that you have understood this method now we are going to see next method of measuring price elasticity of demand and that method is total expenditure method this method is also known as a outlay method this is also known as a outlay method and this method is also developed by dr alfred marshall how price elasticity of demand is measured in this method by making comparison between the total expenditure made on a commodity before the change in price and after the change in its price we make comparison between total expenditure before the change in price and after the change in price किमत बदलने आधी किती एक्सपेंडिचर करने ताला है किमत बदलने अनंतर किती एक्सपेंडिचर बदलने ताला किती करने ताला ते एक्सपेंडिचर में ताले तो जो बदले तो विचार दिखूँ ना अपनी इथा प्राइस इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ डिमांड ठरवत अस्तो ओके इथा आपले ला तीन प्रकारे प्राइस इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ डिमांड मोस्टाइल नॉर्मली अपन का समझ तो तो फॉर्मूला ये ठीक नहीं दिलाया है टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर इज़ इक्वल टू प्राइस इनटू क्वांटिटी डिमांडेड ऑफ़ अ कमोडिटी सपोज एक वस्तु ची कीमत दस रुपए अन्य त्याग वस्तु ची अपन टेन यूनिट्स परचेस करे तब त्याग वस्तु वर्ती आप ला धाले ले टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर कि� so according to the change in total expenditure here we are determining the price elasticity of demand whether the demand is relatively elastic relatively inelastic or whether it is unitary elastic that we are going to determine by the way of making comparison between the total expenditure made on commodity before the change in price and after the change in price so according to this method when demand is said to be relatively elastic demand relatively elastic when simple sopa asa me formula is a sangra to mala atisha simplest way madhe kashi mozai chi ya method ni price elasticity of demand temi sangtu mi to mala ya tikani when there are in inverse relationships between price and a total expenditure made on a commodity what kind of relationships when there are inverse relationships between the price and a total expenditure made on a commodity it means the total expenditure made on a commodity is a changing in opposite direction of price it means with a rise in price of a commodity the total expenditure made on a commodity falling down due to rise in price expenditure made on a commodity 
falls and due to the fall in price total expenditure made on a commodity rises these are the inverse relationships between price of a commodity and expenditure made on a commodity see here we are taking into account the relationship between total expenditure made on a commodity and its price not between demand and price we are assuming that there are inverse relationships already there are inverse relationships between price and quantity demanded of a commodity to measure price elasticity of demand we are taking into account the expenditure and price of a commodity here if there are such kind of inverse relationships between the price and total expenditure made on a commodity then demand is said to be relatively elastic demand is said to be relatively elastic elasticity of demand is greater than 1 elasticity of demand is greater than 1 okay पहला पॉइंट लक्षा आला तुम रिटिवली इलास्टिक डिमांड इलास्टिटी ऑफ डिमांड इज ग्रेटर दैन वन इफ देर आर इनवर्स रिलेशनशिप्स बिटवीन प्राइस एंड टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर मेड ऑन अ कमोडिटी प्राइस राइजेस एक्सपेंडिचर मेड ऑन अ कमोडिटी फॉल्स प्राइस फॉल्स एक्सपेंडिचर मेड ऑन अ कमोडिटी राइजेस this happens normally in case of luxuries and comfort goods when their price falls our expenditure on these commodity increases and when their price rises our expenditure on these commodity falls down okay <clears throat> next one unitary elastic the coefficient of unit elastic demand is equal to 0 काय युनिट इलास्टिक व्हेन प्राइस फॉल्स और राइजेस व्हेन प्राइस फॉल्स और राइजेस टोटल आउटले इट मींस टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर डज नॉट चेंज और रिमेन्स कांस्टेंट इट मींस either the price rises or falls down either the price rises or falls down the total expenditure is remaining constant there is no change in expenditure made on a commodity then the elasticity of demand will be equal to 1 means unitary elastic demand okay this is the unitary elastic demand and now what about relatively inelastic demand this is the opposite of relatively elastic demand elastic demand chahe opposite hai elastic demand madhe kay bagitla apan there were inverse relationships between price and expenditure made on a commodity now here are direct relationships between price and expenditure made on a commodity direct means what with a rise in price expenditure made on commodity rises expenditure made on commodity rises and with a fall in price expenditure made on a commodity falls down there are direct relationships between what between the total expenditure made on a commodity and its price if both are changing in the same direction then there is said to be relatively in elastic demand okay this happens normally in case of necessary goods when prices of necessary goods tend to rise we will have to spend more than before for maintaining its consumption since these are necessary goods we cannot avoid its consumption we cannot postpone its consumption we can postpone the consumption of luxuries and comfort goods but we cannot postpone the consumption of 
necessary goods. Therefore, for maintaining its consumption in the same amount, we will have to spend more than before due to the rise in its price. And when its price falls, for maintaining again same amount of its consumption, we will have to lower the expenditure. That's why we have to lower the कमी होत असतो किंमत कमी झाली म्हणून त्याची आपण डिमांड वाढवणार नाही त्याच्यावरचा एक्सपेंडिचर आपण वाढवणार नाहीयेत बिकॉज ऑफ देयर इज अ सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ दिस गुड्स व्हिच इज बॉट एट एनी कॉस्ट सो इन सच अ वे प्राइस इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ डिमांड कैन बी मेजर्ड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस थ्री डिफरेंट मेथड्स दिस थ्री दिस दिस टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर मेथड सो वन एग्जांपल इज गिवन हियर एक एक्झाम्पल दिलाय तर एक्झाम्पल आपण सोडून बघूयात काय दिलाय एक्झाम्पल बघूयात या ठिकाणी बघा हे कॅन सी इन केस ऑफ कमोडिटी ए इन केस ऑफ कमोडिटी ए व्हॉट इज द सिच्युएशन द सिच्युएशन इज दॅट वेन प्राइस इज रुपीज टेन its quantity demanded is a 6 as a result total expenditure made on it is 60 when the price goes up to is 20 demand went down from 5 units and now the to- total expenditure made on it is is 100 here with a rise in price total expenditure increases as in price total expenditure increased it means in the same direction both are changing price as well as total expenditure with a rise in price there is a rise in total expenditure made on that commodity so here the elasticity of demand is less than 1 परंतु या पुस्तकामध्ये या ठिकाणी दाखवलेलं आहे इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ डिमांड इज ग्रेटर दॅन वन हे चुकीचं आहे इथं आपल्याला दुरुस्ती करायला पाहिजे या बुकमध्ये काय दुरुस्ती करायला पाहिजे इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ डिमांड इज लेस दॅन वन बिकॉज ऑफ द प्राईस अँड टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर आर चेंज इन द सेम डायरेक्शन सो द डिमांड फॉर ए कमोडिटी इज relatively inelastic its coefficient is elasticity of demand is less than 1 now what about in case of b commodity see in case of b commodity when price was rupees 30 4 units were demanded and the total expenditure made on it is 120 rupees when price goes up to rupees 40 the total uh, demand for it falls down from 4 units to 3 units but the total expenditure is remaining constant at rupees 120 it means the demand is unitary elastic why because of either the price rises or falls down the expenditure made on a commodity is remaining constant therefore the demand for b commodity is unit elastic and finally in case of c commodity here we can see that when the price is rupees 50 2 units of that commodity are demanded and the total expenditure made on it is rupees 100 when price goes up to rupees 60 its quantity demanded is 1 as a result total expenditure made on it is fallen down from 100 units 100 rupees to 60 rupees so the total expenditure made on a commodity is changing in opposite direction of a price here is a inverse relationship between price and total expenditure on a commodity therefore the demand for this c commodity is relatively elastic the coefficient is greater than 1 so elasticity of demand is greater than 1 so 
this is the total expenditure method or total outlay method of measuring price elasticity of demand so in this video this is all about the two different methods of measuring price elasticity of demand in the next video we are going to see the point method or geometric method of measuring price elasticity of demand thank you Hi friends In our last video we saw two different methods of measuring price elasticity of demand And now in this video we are going to see the next method of measuring price elasticity of demand that is point method or geometric method This method is developed by dr alfred marshall all these methods are developed by dr alfred marshall the percentage method and total expenditure method these methods can not be used for measuring price elasticity of demand at a given point on the demand curve then the change in price and change in quantity demanded is very small At that time these two methods percentage method and expenditure method these two methods cannot be used geometric method or point method is useful in such a case so this method we are going to learn in this video see price elasticity of demand can be measured at any point given on the demand curve there is a formula for measuring price elasticity of demand at a given point see this is the formula price elasticity of demand at a given point price elasticity of demand at a given point maybe that a p point maybe that a a point q point of any suppose that given point is p price elasticity of demand at point p is equal to l divided by u l divided by u what is mean by l here l stands for lower part of the demand curve of the demand curve from the given point it is the lower part of the demand curve from the given point and u stands for upper part of the demand curve from the given point see here one demand curve is shown see there are two different kinds of demand curve linear demand curve and non linear demand curve there are two different types of demand curves on both kinds of demand curves we can measure the price elasticity of demand first of all we are going to discuss the measurement of price elasticity of demand on linear demand curve on linear demand curve to measure price elasticity of demand this formula is used lower segment means lower part of the demand curve below the given point and u means upper segment or upper part of the demand curve above a given point so l divided by u see here you can see ab is the demand curve 
AB is what? It is a downward sloping demand curve. Suppose the length of this demand curve is 8 cm. And first point is given here, point P, which is exactly at the middle of the line AB. It means it is dividing AB line into the same parts. Don't saman bhag piha point AB align check karata hai asa apne grade dhoriyat. It means PB is of 4 cm and the length of PA is 4 cm because of the entire line AB is of 8 cm. Asa asban assume karun sa lila ahot. So, elasticity of demand at point P in this graph elasticity of demand at point P is equal to L divided by U. What is the lower part of the demand curve below the given point? Dilela point person sa demand curve sa khal sa bhaag. Konta hai PB. Okay. PB. And the upper part of the demand curve PA. PB is 4 cm. PA is also 4 cm. So, the demand elasticity of demand is equal to 1. It means at the middle point of the demand curve, demand is unitary elastic. At the middle point of the demand curve, demand is unitary elastic. Okay. Then, another one point is given here, point P1. Okay. P1 to thikani apla la price elasticity of demand mo zai chye. Baga ita mo zun da khole liye. Kaya da khole thikani. P1 is equal to L divided by U. Price elasticity of demand at point P1 is equal to L divided by U. What is L lower part of the demand curve below the given point, which is the point given P1 below the given point, which is the lower part P1B. P1B is the lower part. And what is the upper part above the given point? PA, P1A is the upper part. So, P1B divided by P1A P1B is 2 cm and P1A is 6 cm. Therefore, here elasticity of demand is 0.33. It means demand is less elastic at point P1. At point P1, demand is less elastic or relatively inelastic. On the other hand, at point P2, demand is more elastic. At point P2, demand is more elastic. Why demand is more elastic here? Because of here, lower part is greater than its upper part. At point P, lower part is equal to upper part. At point P1, lower part is less than upper part. Therefore, at point P2, elasticity of demand is greater than 1, means relatively elastic demand. At point P, elasticity of demand is equal to 1, means unitary elastic demand. At point P1, demand is relatively inelastic. Why? Because of lower part is less than upper part. What about point A and point B? At point B, you can see elasticity of demand is zero. Why? Because of the lower part is zero here. Bicha khali kai hai ka? Kai is nahi hai. Kai is nahi hai manje lower part kai hai naar? Zero hai naar. Therefore, the demand will be perfectly inelastic at point B. And at point A, upper part is zero. H of varcha bhaga madhe kai hai ka? Nahi hai. Therefore, 
upper part is zero and therefore demand is perfectly elastic so we can say that when in case of geometric method we can say that if lower part and upper part are same if l is equal to u then demand is unitary elastic if lower part is greater than upper part then we can say demand is more elastic if lower part is less than upper part then we can say demand is less elastic here demand is more elastic here demand is less elastic or relatively inelastic if lower part is equal to 0 then it can be said that demand is perfectly inelastic if upper part is equal to 0 then it can be said elasticity of demand is infinite means demand is perfectly elastic in such a way we can say that as we moves towards the x axis from the middle point अपन जस जस मिडल पॉइंट कड़ी एक्स एक्सिस कलो तस तस का हो चले डिमांड इज बिकमिंग लेस एंड लेस इलास्टिक इट मींस इट इज बिकमिंग रिलेटिवली इन इलास्टिक एज वी आर मूविंग टुवर्ड्स द एक्स एक्सिस एंड एट द पॉइंट वेर डिमांड कर्व इंटरसेक्ट्स टू द एक्स एक्सिस एट दैट पॉइंट डिमांड इज परफेक्टली इन इलास्टिक on the other hand as we moves towards the y axis from the middle point of the demand curve demand is becoming more and more elastic and it becomes perfectly elastic at the point where demand curve intersects to the y axis okay so this is the geometric method or point method which is used for measuring price elasticity of demand on the non linear demand curve okay now sometime the demand curve may be non linear as shown in this graph see dd is the non linear demand curve on this demand curve if point is given to measure the price elasticity of demand then we will have to draw a tangent which touching to the given point and meeting to both the axes aplyala kay karav lagel ek tangent kadava lagel ja point chi aplyala elasticity of demand mojayche tya point la touch karnara ani x ani y axis la jaun milnara ek tangent aplyala kadava lagel ani aplyala ha formula use karava lagel same formula hai फक्त फिर डिमांड कार मना टेन्जेंट मना फॉर्म्यूला इलास्टिटी ऑफ डिमांड एट अ गिवन पॉइंट इन केस ऑफ नॉन लिनियर डिमांड कार लोअर सेगमेंट ऑफ द टेन्जेंट बिलो अ गिवन पॉइंट लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द टेन्जेंट बिलो अ गिवन पॉइंट फॉर्म्यूला मध्य होता लोअर सेगमेंट ऑफ द डिमांड कार लोअर सेगमेंट ऑफ द टेन्जेंट बिलो अ गिवन पॉइंट दैट इज एल and upper segment of the tangent above a given point that is u l divided by u see dd is the demand curve here dd is a demand curve non linear demand curve and on this demand curve point e is given to measure the price elasticity of demand to measure price elasticity of demand we have drawn tangent ab which is touching to point e and meeting to both the axes now the same formula can be used for measuring price elasticity of demand here elasticity of demand at point at point e is equal to l divided by u what is l lower part of the tangent below the given point eb 
E B this is the lower part divided by E A this is the upper part E A sorry E A is the upper part okay so you can see here if ef eb is equal to ea then demand will be unitary elastic it means if l is equal to u means lower part is equal to upper part then demand is said to be unitary elastic if lower part is greater than upper part then demand is relatively elastic if lower part is less than upper part then demand will be relatively inelastic so these are the th three different methods by which the price elasticity of demand can be measured i hope that you are understanding all these concepts properly and you are enjoying my videos in the next video we are going to discuss about the factors influencing elasticity of demand and the importance of elasticity of demand these two different things we are going to learn in our next video so that's all in this video bye thank you